the Damon Runyon Theater. Once again, Damon Runyon Theater brings you another story by the master storyteller, Damon Runyon. And this one, Neat Strip. And to tell it to you, here is Broadway. Thanks. It is early of a Monday morning that I am sitting in Mindy's with Rube Golden, who is what is called an impresario. Although I think that is a little out of line for a guy who owns nothing but a high-class burlesque show. Now, Rube is very sad, because it seems that his star, Clara Uplington, leaves the show sudden to get married thus leaving the runway of Rube's theater real bare of talent. Rube is sitting with his head in his hands, and I am watching him, when all of a sudden we hear a doll's voice cut in as follows. Uh, excuse me. Huh? You are addressing me, little miss? I want to talk to Mr. Golden. Oh, this is Mr. Golden, but he is in no shape or form willing to talk to anybody. He has troubles. Yes, I know, but I wonder if I could talk to him. Address him and find out. Is it all right? I can say no more than try it. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Golden... Mr. Golden. Go away. Get lost. Drop in the river. Oh, please, I I'd like to talk to you. Broadway, please, get rid of him. Yeah, I'm afraid Mr. Golden is in no mood for chit-chat. He just loses his best attraction. But that's what I want to talk to him about. I'd like to take Clara Uplington's place. You? Oh, you are nothing but a kid. I'm 22. You do not look it. Oh, but I am. I have my birth certificate. Okay, and... okay, you are 22. Now, you hear what Mr. Golden says. Please go away. Huh? I will not. I came here to talk to him, and I will. Mr. Golden, unless you stop up your ears, you'll have to listen to me. I can dance. I can sing a little, and I've got talent. Take it away with you. I never see you before in my life. I know, but please give me a chance in your show. No. I'll make good. Oh, go away, I say. Look, Miss, uh, Miss, um... Uh, Viola Rose is my name. For real? Well, it's really Laura Perkins. Laura? Laura, Broadway. You remember Laura Simmons? I do. There is a real attraction. Yeah, there will never be another Laura. I want to get in your show. Uh, everybody does. You say you are 22? Yes, uh, that's right. Okay. According to the insurance men, you will live to be 65 or so. That gives you 40-odd years to be a good kid and go away. Not until you've given me a chance. I'll sit right here and hang on to you if it takes 40-odd years. With that, this doll sits down. Now, I got to admit that my eyes are not hurt by what I see. I never see a prettier face. Right now, she's a little sore, and her cheeks get pink, and her big brown eyes light up. Rube Golden gives her another look, as do 75 other citizens sitting around in Mindy's. Now, what happens later, and how she gets mixed up with the Yale guy, is quite a story and one which I will tell you in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, Neat Strip. <laughs> Like I say, this Viola Rose sits down like she is willing to spend several years if necessary. Rube takes another look at her and says, Look, kid, every doll wants to sing and dance. It is a disease with the fair sex. They all want to be on the stage. You are no different. Oh, then give me a chance. You ever on the stage before? No, never. Okay, then permit me to slip you some advice. Go away and forget this. But I can take Clara Uplington's place. <laughs> Kid, she is 30 years in the business. 30 years? But, Rube, she does not look more than 38. The next 38 she sees will be on her son's birthday. My, my. And to think how young she looks from where I sit when I see her. Yes. Look, we were talking about me. I can take Clara Uplington's place. You are never on the stage before, and you wish to take the place of a doll who I pay four C's a week. No. Do you want me to prove I can do it? I do not wish you to do anything but take a subway. Here is a dime. All right, I'll show you. Hey, what is she going to do, Rube? Hey, 
No, not here. Little miss, there is a draft in here. I want to sing and dance, and I can. I'll show you. She is going into a routine. Clara's routine. My, my, this is awkward. Rube, she is getting to a very dangerous spot in the routine. Okay, okay, stop it. Right there. Do not go further. Well, will you give me a chance? But, kid... All right. There she goes again. Okay, okay, you win. Be at the theater tomorrow morning at 10. Now, I watch Miss Viola Rose very carefully uh, to see how good she is. And I will say that with a little more practice, she will be sensational. Then it comes up a couple weeks later that I pass Rube's theater and I see Viola Rose's name up in big letters. I go backstage and there I run into Rube who says, Broadway, that night in Mindy's is the luckiest in my whole life. Viola is a sensation right off. She makes good, huh? Like a gold dollar. Of course, when she sings, it is a little like an old-fashioned coffee grinder with pebbles in it. <laughs> but if customers want songs, they go to the opera. If they wish entertainment, they come here. She is as good as Clara Uplington, huh? Better. In fact, Broadway, in my book, she is one and two with Laura Sibbins. Gee, coming from you, that has given her a breakaway start. But I'm not going to keep her long. No? She is leaving? She is, but she does not know it. Come on. Where? A dressing room. Is it all right? I mean, maybe she is dressing. Not yet. Oh. Why do you say you will not keep her long? You know the Golden Bird Club? I am never in there because it is a little too high class uh, for my financial condition. Well, they get in touch with me. They offer to pay Viola 600 a week. My, my. For a doll who gets a start in Mindy's, that is quite a jump. Wait until she hears about it. Who is it? Rube, honey. And Broadway. Oh. Come on in. Oh, hello, Broadway. How are you? Just fine, just fine. <laughs> and you? Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Sit down. Sure. Uh, Viola, I, I got to talk to you. Oh, why? Is, is anything wrong? Oh, nothing. Uh, I pay you four C's a week, that right? Yes. Oh, but if that's too much, I can... It is I... not enough. How would you like six? Me? Six hundred... Oh, no, Rube. I, I'm not that good. The Golden Bird Club thinks so. The, the Golden Bird? You hear of it? Oh, sure, lots of times. But I've never been there. You will. At six C's per. I don't understand. I, I mean, I don't get it. Look, they offer to buy your contract from me and up you 200 fish on the week. Oh, and that means I'll have to leave you. Sure. I won't. You will. Look, I underpay you. I can still match that six C's and make money on the deal, but... I don't want any more money from you. It is not the money. It is the advancement. But I like it here. That is not the point. From the Golden Bird, you can go into a big Broadway show. Look at all the dolls who do it before. I don't care about them. You gave me a chance Sure, and... in burlesque. This gives you a chance for the big stuff. Am I right, Broadway? Rube is right, Viola. Maybe you kick around burlesque for some time, but who sees you? Nobody that counts. On the other hand, a lot of important citizens go to the Golden Bird. And from there on, who knows? Oh, but, but, Rube, what about your show? Honey, I am in this business for 35 years. I lose one star after another, but sooner or later I come up with a new one. Maybe I will find one again in Mindy's. Who knows? <laughs> Well, it takes Rube a little while longer to talk Viola into the deal, but he does. And I hear that Viola is not at the Golden Bird very long before she is packing the customers in. Then it comes up one night about a month later, and I am sitting in Mindy's, when all of a sudden, who comes in but Rube, and Viola is with him. High-class joint. The Golden Bird is supposed to be a high-class joint. Broadway. You know what happens there? Surprise me. There is a table full of hot shot citizens from some rah-rah joint up the river or down the river. Yale. They were from Yale. Well, education seems to be advancing. They are studying at the Golden Bird. Sure. How to be high-class heels. One of them puts a lighted cigarette against Viola while she is dancing. What? You all right, kid? Oh, sure, sure, I'm all right. Just mad. Nothing like that ever happened while I was working for Rube. But in a high-class place where everybody has to dress in white tie and tails, it happened. Burlesque. Everybody looks down on it, but I'll take it any day. I'll take the whistles and the yells and leave those characters at the Golden Bird have their broad A's and narrow minds. I'm going back there and tear it apart. They toss me out before I finish with those Yale citizens. Yeah, maybe you need some help. Now, I am not real hungry, so well, let us... Sit down, both of you. Huh? It's not worth it. 
I won't go back again, and I don't want either of you to get hurt. I... Oh. oh, kid, don't. You come back to room at 600 a week. I, uh, you... I beg your pardon. Huh? Who are you? Where do you come from? I I should like to speak to Miss Rose. Well, look. Look who it is. Broadway. There's one of the Yale citizens. Why? Now, you... wait a minute, please. Let me say something. I, I came here to apologize. No, oh, never are. mind. Go back to your coming friends. They're not friends. my friends. I just happened to meet them at the Golden Bird. You better be at it before I forget I am with a lady. Also, I am not outnumbered here. Yeah, you better go, mister. Not until I've apologized for what happened. Let me sit down. Get up and out. No. Huh? But this guy... Let's see what he has to say, Rube. Let's see if he can think up an excuse for the rah-rah boy who did it to I me. I have no excuse, Miss Rose. There is none for such conduct. It was not only brutal and nasty, it was stupid. Please don't judge all of us by the distorted sense of humor of one fool. That is a pretty bunch of words. I'm apologizing I'm not... to Miss Rose, not to you. Okay, wise guy, get up. Oh, look, if it'll make you feel better, take a swing at me. Get up. Rube. Put up your hands. I told you, take a swing at me. Get it off your chest. Go on. Put up your dukes. Rube, sit down. If you don't, I'll, I won't go back to your show. I... Okay, Viola. But this citizen better not hang around. Is he one of the guys who puts the punch on you, Rube? I do not know. Well, his knuckles are skinned like he lays five against somebody's teeth. Nobody hits me, not in the teeth. Well, if he does not hit you, who does he hit? Oh, look, forget about Say, that. Say, those knuckles look like you... Who did you hit, mister? That's beside the point. Uh, did you... Did you hit the man who... Well, well, well. I think maybe that is it. Uh, I'm afraid I lost my temper. Uh, for me? I... Well, look, I've got an idea. The evening's still young. Why don't we make a party of this? I mean, consider it my treat. Nothing doing. It is on me. Oh, but I insist. And oh, I, I'm Daniel Frame, Jr. Daniel Frame... My goodness. Daniel Frame. Frame. That name is very familiar. Since it is a name that is attached to about 80 zillion bucks, it should be very familiar and not breed contempt at all. Oh, please, don't blame me for my father's money. Now, what do you say? Do we make a party of it? Oh, well, I, I'd love to, but... But what? But I... What would your friends say if they saw you with her? Well, I... You're an artist. Well, I've watched you night after night at the Golden Bird... I I was going to send my card around to your dressing room, but... But what? Well, I didn't know what you'd say or, or how you'd take it. Now, this thing tonight seems like a, a twist of fate. I, you really think so? I bet I do. Now, do we have a party? Daniel, you are a good guy. We have the party. Let us go. Uh, Rube, uh, uh, sit down. We are going on a party. We will discuss business. What business? <laughs> Take a good look at them. <laughs> I wonder if they know we are still here. As far as they are concerned, we are in Flatbush. Let them go, Rube. Fate does not need us to do any more twisting. The way Viola and Daniel Frame look at each other is like waffle syrup. It does not take much to guess that they are in another world, all alone. But later, I begin to wonder how this will come out, because Daniel Frame Jr. comes from a family that brushes off the Plymouth Rock for the pilgrims to land on. And Viola Rose may be an artist, but uh, in a somewhat limited sense indeed. Anyhow, I figure I will wait and see. I do. And what happens, I will tell you in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, Neat Strip. Like I say, Viola Rose and Daniel Frame begin a duet, and I wonder where the first sour note will come in. Although Daniel is getting an education at Yale, it seems he comes to New York to attend classes at Rube's Theater. And I know that sooner or later, word is going to get back to his ever-loving parents. Then what happens? So it comes up one night, and I am in Mindy's when in comes Viola. This time, she is alone and sits down and says... Broadway. Yeah? I'm pretty much in love. <laughs> that is yesterday's newspaper. I know. 
And he loves me. Ah, I will wait until you get around to some news that is news. I'm not doing anything wrong, am I? In what way? By being in the show. Look, kid, that is the way you earn a living. I can name 10, 20 dolls who never earn a dime in their lives. But they have got fur coats and big cars. And that's the way I think. You are worried about Daniel's folks, huh? Oh, no, not his father. You meet him? No, but some of those New England citizens are our best customers at the theater. No, it's, it's his mother I'm afraid of. Uh, I see what you mean. Daniel wanted to tell his mother and father, but I wouldn't let him. Why not? It seems to me that the sooner this thing is out in the open, the better it will be for everybody. I, I told him to wait. Yeah. Does Daniel ever say anything about your act? Only that he's afraid I might catch cold. That runway gets pretty drafty. <laughs> he's awfully sweet about being concerned for me. Well, Viola, it seems you have got a problem. Of course, if you quit... Oh, no, I won't do that. rube has been good to me. Gave me a break when I... <laughs> oh, but you know that. Sure. On Broadway, he's having trouble. Oh? In what way? Well, the police commissioner's starting a clean-up campaign. No more of my act or any like it. <laughs> well, with that out, what is left? I don't know. <laughs> but we're trying something different tonight. Now, that will be very interesting. What? I'm going to do my act with clothes. <laughs> What Viola says is true, because I hear later that day that there is a cleanup campaign on. I go to Rube's show that night, and it is packed. Everybody is there to see Viola Rose do her act. It is the same way the next night, and the next, every night for a week. Then it comes up a certain evening, and I am backstage talking to Rube, and the scene is as follows. She is wow at them again, Broadway. I do not understand it, Rube. First, they pay to see her dance with very little on in the way of warm clothing. Now, they still pack in, and she has got on more clothes than an Eskimo. <laughs> optimists. They are all optimists. They wait for her to do her old act. She is a great artist, Broadway. She keeps them guessing. Hello, hello. Well, Mr. Frame. Hello, Broadway. How are you? And how is Yale? Fine. Rube, this is wonderful. She's wonderful, and I've got a great idea. Idea for what? Wait till she comes off. Okay. Broadway, there are ten jet dobs in that audience. Just wait to close me up and arrest her. But they are full. Here she comes. Put on the blackout. Okay. Kill oh. for the blackout. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Wonderful. <laughs> you keep them on the edges of their seats. Even and they keep waiting and waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, let's go someplace where we can talk. I've got an idea. Come on, Rube, Broadway. I want you in on this, too. Oh, my dressing room. But uh, what are you talking about? What idea? Oh, you'll see. There'll be no trouble at all now. Wait till Mother sees you do your act now. Ma mother? Your mother? Sure. Here. You say your mother, Mr. Frame? That's perfect. Why, all you do now is dance, and good, too. What are you talking about? Well, you see, my mother, I was afraid she'd be a little worried about Viola catching cold. <laughs> Mother's always been a bug about that sort of thing. And... I get to the point, Daniel. What do you want to say? Look, I'll tell Mother. Then next week, I can bring her here to see you. Here? Why not? I, I can think of a lot of reasons. Danny, not yet. But why not? There's nothing wrong with your act. Nobody will be able to find anything the matter. No, I, I'm scared stiff. Oh, Broadway, help me talk to her. Maybe he has got something, Viola. Sure. Why, the way you do your act now, it is practically a surefire bet for a Sunday school picnic. But, but what if she finds out what, what it was before? How? Oh, I, I don't know, but some way, I guess. Look, honey, there is not a chance. Why, she sees you, she falls for you, and before you can say, take it off, you and Daniel will be married without his mother ever knowing a thing. But it doesn't seem fair that way. I think she should know. Viola, do you love me? Of course I do. Then that's that. Rube, I'll bet this is the first time you'll play to a society leader from New England. Well, it seems like a very good plan, and Viola says she will go through it. So it comes up one night the next week, and there I am sitting in the audience in Rube's theater, wondering how this will come out. I keep looking around for Daniel Frame and his mother, but I do not see them, and it is coming up time for Viola's act when the scene is as follows. I beg your pardon. Huh? I said I beg your pardon. Are you talking to me? Yes. I wonder if you could tell me when Miss Rose's act goes on. Oh, next. Thank you. You are welcome. You seem to be looking for someone. I can move over one seat if you like and make room. No, 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 thank you. I am just uh, looking around. I see. <laughs> This, I take it, is to be Miss Rose's act. Huh? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. This is her act. 
She's quite a pretty girl, isn't she? Oh, she is 100%. And dances quite well, too. Yeah, we like it. Um, do you mind if I ask you a question now? Of course not. What is it? You do not seem like the kind of a dame, a uh, uh, lady who comes here. What makes you think a lady wouldn't come here? <laughs> I guess you have got me there. The patrons seem to like this young lady. Oh, they do. She's really graceful. It seems very odd that the patrons should appreciate this sort of an act. I always thought they had different tastes. Lady, like they sing in books, there is no accounting for tastes. I suppose not. Am I wrong, or do I sense some some kind of curious expectancy among these patrons? That man over there, for example, now he looks as though, well, expectant. <laughs> Lady, you do not know how much, but I think he will be disappointed. What's that? Oh, sounds like somebody having trouble in the back. Do not hey, faint. Fire! Hey, there's a fire out. Fire? We gotta get out of here. Come on, lady, I will help Just you. Just a moment. Sit down. Huh? I said sit down. Don't get panicked. Lady, if you wish to stay here and become a toasted bun, okay. Me, I am leaving. The fools, they'll all be killed. Why doesn't that girl on stage do something? Lady, please, leave go of my arm. Wait. Music, music, play. Go on, play. You come with me. Me, where to? That girl doesn't know what to do. She's frightened out of her wit. But don't stand there. Get me to the stage. Lady, I'm going. Get me to the stage. I said everyone's going toward the exits. We can get to the stage. Quickly. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, let us through. Come on, bring it up. Be let seated, us through. Let us, all let of you. Through. Music, What's play that? something. Play this girl's number. Go on. Up to that door. Okay, here is the stage. Now I am leaving. You wait. Young door. lady, Miss Rose. Why, what? Don't just stand there. Do something. But what? Can't you do anything that'll keep these idiots in their seats? I, uh, only one thing. Then go ahead. Go on quickly before it's too late. All right. Spark louder. Hit it hard. <laughs> That is your old act. Hey, you, you better... Let her alone. Go on, young lady. Continue. Well, Viola Rose goes into her old act. And I have got to say that this time she does it better than any time before. First one guy sees her, then another. And it is not long before every citizen in the place stops right where he is, fire or no fire, and watches Viola. And she keeps right on and on until the fire department gets there. And it's a good thing they arrive when they do, because Viola is just about out of ideas. When the danger is past, I look around for the old doll who drags me up to the stage. But she is gone. Then it comes up later in Viola's dressing room, and the scene is as follows. Oh, Broadway, it was terrible. I don't know how long I could have gone on. Kid, you do all right. You save a lot of Viola. lives. Viola. Oh, honey. Honey, are you all right? Oh, yes, Danny, sure. She is more than all right. You know what she does? Oh, yes, I know. Honey, you you might have been killed. Well, I'm all right, Danny. I wonder what becomes of the old dame who thinks of the idea. Oh, she was wonderful. I wouldn't have thought of it, but she... What are you she, talking about? Some old doll is sitting next to me. Good and... evening, Daniel. Uh, mother. I got here before you did, so I went into the theater. I'm glad I did. Mother? This is your mother? Uh, yes. Uh, Mother, this is... Uh... Miss Rose, I know. I... I saw her act. You... you saw me do that? Yes, I did. Daniel, I thought you said she was just a dancer. <laughs> she is, Mother. Why... What it... she did, she seemed to do quite expertly, as though she had quite a bit of experience. Uh, now listen, Mother. I believe it's referred to as a... Striptease. Sure, that's it. That's it. Viola. So she saw me all right. I'm not ashamed of you it. You know, I rather suspected the patrons in the audience were expecting something. Now I know what it was. With that, we all look at Daniel's mother. And she keeps looking at Viola Rose. I want to sneak out and get away because... I do not want to look at Viola's face or Daniel's. Then something happens, and what the payoff is, I will tell you in a minute. ready to take the wind and say goodbye to everybody and leave them standing there looking at each other, Rube Golden turns up. And what happens is this. <laughs> <laughs> 
It is wonderful. It is wonderful. At first, they want to throw a pinch at me and Viola for her act, but the fire marshal says if it is not for Viola, but... Hey, where does she come from? Uh, Rube, I, uh, uh... Mother, may I present Mr. Golden? Mr. Golden, this is my mother, Mrs. Daniel Frame Sr. Well, well, well. So you are his mother. I'm happy to know you, Mr. Golden. Are you kidding? You should be proud of this young lady, Mr. Golden. She saved a lot of lives with her act. And uh, how do you feel about it, Mrs. Frame? Well, Mother... Oh, be quiet, Daniel, and take that silly look off your face. Comfort your fiancé. Fiancé? Mother! Oh, did, did you say fiancé? Yes, I did. Oh. Well, Mrs. Frame, you are a good Joe. Mr. Golden? Yeah, Mrs. Frame? This girl needs quite a lot of work. Her act needs polishing. Of course, she did a very neat strip, but who is the best you ever saw? <laughs> like I always say, Laura Simmons is the best. And where do you keep yourself for all these years, Laura? <laughs> And so ends the famous Damon Runyon story, Neat Strip. Listen in again next week for... The Damon Runyon Theater. The Damon Runyon Theater with John Brown as Broadway is directed by Richard Sandville and the stories adapted for radio by Russell Hughes. Vern Carstensen is in charge of production. This is a Mayfair production. <laughs>